Okay. Yesterday we learned the basics of probability that is necessary for um, understanding training a hidden Markov model and use a trained hidden Markov model for recognition. So the this is the definition of the joint probability in terms of the conditional prob as a product of the conditional probability and the a priori probability that gives rise to base rule and the a priori probability P of B itself can be written uh, as this summation that is the summation of the product of the conditional probabilities and the a priori probabilities. This we will use in our derivation. Next we will extend the joint probability definition not to ju not just to two events but multiple events and when the multiple events come the joint probability can be written as a product of various conditional probabilities ending up with the, the a priori probability of the first event and this can be a so if the events a1 a2 a3 a an are independent not just uncorrelated but independent then this turns out to be product of the a priori probabilities of the events. We will use this in our derivation. So we looked at the elements of the various meanings of the symbols of the HMM that an HMM has states, they are called hidden states and in general we learnt, also learnt that the a phoneme is represented as a sequence of three states and and a, a word may consist of several states and utterance may consist of a long number of states. Now if there are capital N states in a in, in a HMM that represents a sentence, we denote the identity of these states, hidden states, emitting states as Q1, Q3 up to Q capital N. So if the word Mera is there, then, then there will be 12 states, capital N will be 12, uh, 12 states in the word HMM consist of 4 phonemes, 4 into 3 states, 12, and we denote the, the states, first state as Q1, first two, second state Q2 and so on up to Q cap, Q12. Yeah, so with each state is a probability distribution which tells us the probability of various the probability of the features taking various values. So we denote it by now this could be the probability of the, the probability of the second formal frequency taking a value 2000 is very high than it taking 1000 or 3000 and so on. So these probabilities normally we represent it as a normal distribution and quite often as a Gaussian mixture model. The there are capital N states and so with the each state there is one uh, probability distribution B1, B2 all the way up to B capital N and the set of all these uh, probability distributions we denote it by capital B. The state transit probability matrix uh, which is whose elements A, I, J denotes the probability of making a transition from state I to state J. And then there is a pro initial probability distribution uh, pi all these things have to be estimated. So we can state three problems. One is if you have a trained model which is given by the parameters this, how do you compute the similarity between a test feature vector sequence and the model? Which is essentially what is the likelihood that this model generated this test feature sequence? That is this sentence when somebody spoke it gave rise to this sequence of feature vectors. That's the first problem. We will use the follower algorithm. Today we will learn about that. Second is, one, even if we know that and given a test observation sequence and a trained model, how to find the optimum state sequence? Okay, this, the observation sequence is of length capital T. What are the states associated with each observation sequence? That is, we, O1 came from which state? State 1, state 2, state 3 and so on. So, we want to assign, essentially we want to assign each feature vector to one of the uh, states, one of the states, one of the capital N states. So we want to know the identity of the state which gave rise to each of these feature vectors. So that is, we will use a Vitaly algorithm, which is, which is an, 
it is uh, actually a dynamic programming algorithm. So this is useful to derive the phone sequence corresponding to the utterance that is formed. Third problem is, well, in both cases, we assume that we have a trained HMM model. How do you train an HMM model given a set of uh, data uh, we, uh, whose transcriptions are known? So we'll address each of these solutions one by one. To be so, we started with the training subword HMM, subword HMMs are HMMs which represent a linguistic unit smaller than a word, and uh, and we use an iterative method of uh, estimating the parameters. Now, when you say it's an iterative method, you need to have a initial version of the parameters of model that that can be approximate, but this approximation keeps on increasing as we iterate as you go on with the iteration because the, the algorithm that is the bomb elch algorithm also known as followed by called algorithm guarantees that the likelihood of the trained model explaining the training data increases uh, with the, each iteration so as iteration increases the the model becomes better and better in explaining the training data uh, but we always need an initial set of parameters and yesterday we talked about how we looked at the initial set of parameters, how to get the initial set of parameters. The assumption that we made is that if in one training utterance, if there are capital N phones, we assume that all these phones are of equal duration and uh, divide this, the training features, feature vector sequence of that training utterance into N equal parts and assign each part to a phoneme in the phoneme sequence. We yesterday we also, so these are the basic units that we use in um, our Indian alphabet and uh, we, all, we also looked at the pronunciation dictionary which explains how a word is to be pronounced as a sequence of phonemes <coughs> which takes into account pronunciation variations script to phoneme rules. So, letter to sound rules if you wish. Now with this example we looked at how to get, suppose the first sentence, spoken sentence is Mera Bharat Mahan and using, looking at the pronunciation dictionary we derived the corresponding phoneme sequence which includes two silence on either side. Now looking at, suppose this is the wave file that is there and how do you get an initial set of parameters. Now if you assume that this sentence was one second long then there will be 98 feature vectors with at the 100 feature vector rate because frame shift is 10 millisecond. What we'll do is to divide these 98 feature vectors into 16 phonemes, which are there in the black here, which means say each phoneme, each label, each segment in the spoken wave, I should say each phoneme, each segment in the spoken wave gets six, six feature vectors. Uh, I, I am using the word each segment or each label because some phonemes occur repeatedly. In which case here this segment gets six feature vectors, this segment gets six feature vectors and so on. So R gets uh, three, there are three repetitions of the R in this sentence. So each segment, each repetition of R gets six feature vectors each. And uh, so that gave, that is what is, is uh, explained in detail in this slide. So we get six feature vectors, uh, the M for example occurs twice in the sentence, therefore M was assigned a sequence of six feature vectors twice. And now since if a phone is modeled by a three state HMM, then these six feature vectors can be divided into six feature vector, the feature vector sequence of length six is divided into three equal parts. So, uh, and uh, the, uh, for example, ma has occurred twice here, which means that first occurrence of ma gives two feature vectors to the state one of ma, and next occurrence of ma again gives a set of two feature vectors to the first state of m. Now, so from this sentence, we get four, two plus two, four feature vectors uh, assigned to the first state of the uh, label m. So we can now compute the mean and uh, standard deviation and that gives uh, that is the parameters of Gaussian distribution associated with the first state. You can do the, the 
operation for the second ester set of uh, the phoneme M and you can do it for all other phonemes uh, as I said the uh, word mera this should be double A it occurs thrice and so on which means that we now this is we have estimated the set of distributions as well with the, each of the phonemes in this sentence actually we don't do that we, our training is, cons, doesn't consist of just one free speech file it consists of several sentences and uh, we do we collect all such segments from all training data and then re-estimate then we estimate the parameters of the uh, distributions as well with the each state so we have estimated the likelihood functions that is the conditional probability what is conditional probability suppose this uh, one feature vector is is emitted or as well as the state one what is the its likelihood what is the likelihood that the observation given observation ot is coming from uh, is coming is emitted by the jth state and that is given by bj of ot that is the expression that we use uh, we can that is one parameter of the model the second parameter set is uh, the transient probability matrix we can simply assume that the transient probability is half if uh, for self transient probability or making a transition uh, to the next state otherwise as you can set it to zero similarly you can take an initial value of the pi as the that the system can make transition to one as usual or it can skip first state and go directly to the stage uh, state two with the probability half half so we have now given a set of training data and their trans world level transcriptions and dictionary we have an initial estimate of the parameters of each of the phonemes if there are 50 phonemes we have such 50 assumptions now the assumption that we made is that all phonemes are equal have uh, equal duration which is not right but it is a proc it's okay to begin with why it is not right as we talked earlier we we have the concept of long vowels and short vowels the short vowel is shorter it should be shorter than the long vowel r the a uh, should be shorter than the r and so on so now this is the uh, better estimation of parameter that is the iterative procedure for improving the uh, parameters of the hidden marco model so if you look at this one second long sentence now it is split up this 98 frames it is split up into 16 segments with each segment of six frames duration the assumption that we made is that each segment is of equal duration now what we need to do is to add so the boundaries between the phonemes are they come every six frames along their boundaries are equally spaced along this time axis or the feature vector axis OT what we need to do is to adjust these boundaries such that what we when I say when I say E we it is the algorithm what it, it is expected to do is to adjust the boundaries so that the duration of the long ovals is more than the duration of the corresponding short ovals and so on and consonants are generally sh shorter than the ovals and quite often there will be long silence on either side so it has to adjust these boundaries so as to so that you can the, the HMM with the given parameter explains this data better explain the training data better what do you explain or represent it means that the likelihood of the training data corresponding to uh, these HMMs is in increases so right now I still have not come to the math part of it I am still in the intuition intuitive mode so our goal is to search for that set of phoneme boundaries we want so phoneme boundaries this boundary can go anywhere here there and each boundary can go anywhere we want to search all possible sets of phoneme boundaries such that the HMM parameters 
estimated by the revised boundaries. Now, if you revise the boundary, let's take one example of a boundary revision. Of course, we move the boundaries like this, then we compute the uh, hidden, the mean and standard deviation of the Gaussian distribution so associated the R using this long, which is longer than this, this segment, which is longer than the six frames that we assume. And similarly here, this may be 10 frames longer compared to the six frames that was assigned earlier. So now you take 10 frames here, seven frames here, six, seven frames here. Now you uh, re-estimate the parameters of the state distributions that is mean and standard deviation you what we get is a revised distribution for the oval R and similarly for all other ovals. B of this particular B denotes the distribution probability distribution so with the states and for various ovals we re-estimate these mean and standard deviation by for this particular boundaries. Then we need to search all possible boundary adjustments and see which set of boundaries give the highest likelihood, uh, which set of boundaries will give the high, highest likelihood. So our goal is to find that set of reverse boundaries which represent the training data better. The search for such state spooning boundaries or state boundaries, uh, th so this can be formed as a search in um, amongst all possible sets of spooning boundaries. And once we get the best phoneme boundary, we update the uh, parameters mean and standard deviation. And then we, once we have the uh, revise, revision number one of the uh, initially, let us say we had a initial probability, initial set of parameters that is assumed by, assume, that was derived by assuming equal phoneme duration for each of the phonemes. Then we search uh, Amongst all the phoneme boundaries, revised adjusted phoneme boundaries, we search for that state boundary which whose likelihood is highest amongst all possible sets. So that is called uh, maximization, and then we update the parameters. And then what you get is once you update the parameters, we get a revised set of parameters that at the end of the iteration one, let us call it as lambda one. Now from the lambda one, again we search for, try to readjust the para boundaries further and keep repeating these two steps. These two steps are called expectation maximization and we repeat it, we iterate it a few times uh, till certain conditions are satisfied. So our, so what it requires is we need to search for the set of owning boundaries such that the likelihood of the training data given the param given the revised parameter is highest. For all this thing to happen, we need to be able to come to the likelihood of the training data. So that is what we are going to address first. That given a set of observations, O1, OT, all the way up to OT, our goal is to uh, that and if we are given a trained HMM, which, which is lambda 0, lambda 1, whatever it is, our goal is to compute the likelihood of the feature vector sequence given the um, model. Now, to the right side of this vertical bar, there are two quantities. Probability of the observation sequence given not just the model, but also a given state sequence. Q represents a state sequence. Uh, let us do that job first because did I skip something? No. Because if I am able to compute this, then I will be able to compute probability of O given lambda. We will come to that step one later. First, let us make the following assumption that we have a trained model that is told here and we have a sequence of feature vectors and let us assume one state sequence. Let us assume one particular state sequence. What does that mean? That O1 is assigned to some state, we let us call it as a Q1, the O2 is assigned to Q2 and so on. Once that is there, then can we compute this probability. Let me show it graphically. That is shown in the next slide, uh, titled Match Observation or Speech Vector Sequence with a Model. 
here we resort to the trellis or in DTW I talked about grid or trellis, trellis arrange so, so that the, the, the computation becomes easier to understand. On the x-axis is the observation sequence, the time axis. O1 first observation sequence, first observation or the first 39 dimensional MFCC vector, second O, O3, O4 and at a time small t we have the observation OT and the next observation at time t plus 1, t okay. e subscript as a time all the way up to capital, capital T th feature vector that is on the x axis and on the y axis we have the capital N states. The states how, what, how many states are there? N is there, so 1, 2, 3, all the way up to nth state. And let us denote this row as ith state. This is the ith state. And uh, now our goal is, so if you, our goal is to compute this step, which is the observation, likelihood of the observation sequence given the model. But, these observations could be assigned to, they might come from multiple state sequences. What does that mean? The first observation may be assigned to the state number 1, okay, that is okay, uh, uh, and the next observation may be still assigned to state number 1 because it made a self transition, or it may be, uh, it may have come from the state number 2 or it might have come from state number 3 by skipping the second state and so on. So there are multiple ways in which a given observation can be associated with the, any of the states there are. And so which means that the first observation might have in principle or in, in, in a worst scenario or in a loose sense could come from any of the capital N states. That is first observation vector could be associated with any of the capital N states. Similarly, the second observation vector can again be associated with the, any of the capital N states and similarly so on. So every observation vector or the feature vector can be, as, can be associated or represented or explained by any of the capital N states. And if you make an assumption that these observations are independent. Here we are making an assumption that the first feature vector and the second feature vector, there are there is no correlation, not linear, not any type of relation. That's if you make an assumption, then the ways in which the observations, capital T observations, can be assigned to capital N states would be the product of all these possibilities, which would be nothing but N multiplied m times which is n power m and that is exponential. Uh, so the dynamic programming algorithm as applied which uh, in the HMM context is called Viterbi, um, uh, that is not true. Uh, so we need to make compute all these uh, uh, the likelihoods of all these paths. What we do it efficiently using an iterative algorithm and this algorithm is called forward algorithm. That's what we talk. In the next slide, that is, our goal is to let's see the next slide. The our goal is to compute probability of the O1, O2, O3, all the way up to O capital T given the model. Now, let's go step by step. The first step is there are many state sequences or paths. We already computed ca capital N power M assignments which essentially com corresponds to a path in this trail list as we saw in the uh, DTW. So suppose O1 is assigned to this and O2 is also assigned to state 1 and O3 is assigned to state 3 and so on. Uh, so, so these paths, these circles uh, uh, show the assignment of OT plus 1 to n minus 1 state and the last two um, feature vectors to the nth state. Now if you draw, so all these associations, if you connect them through lines, then this it becomes a path in this trellis. And uh, in kind of order of magnitude, there are n power m such paths, 
and so what we'll do is we'll take one such path and let us do the calculation so the slide we assume one particular path that means which is equivalent to assuming one particular state sequence what it says is that o1 was assigned to the some state o2 is assigned to some state and so on so q1 if it is equal to 1 what is q1 q1 is the identity of the state which uh, is associated with the first observation sequence now if suppose it is 1 what it means is that o1 is emitted by the first state the the q2 the value of q2 says what is the state number to which second observation o2 is associated this was also one in the earlier case and q3 uh, which we, it says that o3 is associated with the suppose the value of q3 is 3 then o3 is associated with the third state and so on so essentially q1 q2 q3 qt each of these variables take a value q n e t will take a value 1 or 2 or 3 all the way up to capital M where capital M is the number of states. So q t tells which teeth observation is associated with which state, state number 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way up to capital M. Let us to begin with let us assume one such path, one such assignment. Let us call this as q1, q2, q3 to capital QT. So, out of the uh, capital N power M assignments, uh, capital N power M assignments are path, we are taking one such state assignment sequence. Now, as I wrote earlier, if we assume that the, now, so now we have a model, we also have assumed a state sequence. Now, like, let us compute this quantity, which is the likelihood of the observation sequence given not just the model but also for one particular state assignment, state assignment of state sequence. Now this can be written uh, as the product of uh, this quantity. What does it say? When the teeth, let us look at this thing. What does it mean? The, suppose the first observation sequence is associated with the Q1, state Q1, that's that's what, that is, let's say Q1, let us say Q1 was 1, Q2, uh, let me write, Q2 also was 1, and Q3 was 3, this is what we assumed for, for illustration sake. So, BQ1, what, Q1 value is 1, therefore, this, what we need to compute is the likelihood of first observation sequence being uh, associated with the state 1 because q1 is 1. Now we assume that observations are independent and uh, therefore the probability of the entire observation sequence is nothing but the product of the probability of each of the uh, observations, uh, each of the observation. So these are all conditional probabilities that given the state 1, what is the likelihood of the O1 being generated here? And now this multiplied by, what, what about the Q2, what about to which um, state observation O2 was assigned? That Q2 tells that it is assigned again to the state 1. What about the O3? If you look at O3, it says that O3, Q, the value of Q3 is 3, which means that O3 was assigned to state 3 and so on. 